Well, let's look at the area of a right cylinder, and we're going to do this by taking a circle down here in this plane. We'll say this circle has a radius of six feet, and we're going to extrude it. It's on the green-blue plane, and we're going to take this and extrude it into the blue axis a, to a height of 15 feet. So now we've got a figure which has a circle for a base on the top and a circle for the base on the bottom. But now it's got this curved lateral area, just like, oh, just like the label of a soup can. We can see we've got the two formulas on the left. Um, the surface area is two times the base. The bases are the two circles, plus the circumference times the height. The height means the height of the cylinder. That's the 15 in this case. We're going to split this one apart and, um, and solve it with a net, just like we did with a prism. Let's go do that. Now we'll work off the net view for this cylinder that we've just seen in 3D. We know the two circular bases, or the circle is pi r squared. This circle has a radius of 6 feet. We know that the height of the cylinder is 15 feet. And we know that the distance, remember from this demonstration, the distance that a circle travels without skidding in one revolution is its circumference. So its circumference times the height would be the area of this rectangle, which would be the lateral area, that curved surface which has been flattened out here, just like the label on that Campbell soup can. So area is circumference times the height. Circumference is pi d, so you could say it's pi dh, or you could say it's 2 pi r h. Any of those three would give you the, that green area. So now let's clean this up a little bit and write this expression down because the area of a cylinder, and this of course is a right cylinder, we've got the green expression plus two of the blue ones which are simply circles, so it's 2 pi r squared. And let's substitute in for this particular figure. And we have substituting in a radius of 6, and a height of 15. And when we simplify, we can see we have, uh, we generate two terms that can be combined. We have 180 pi for the lateral area and 72 for the two circles. So they're still in terms of pi. I can combine them 252 pi square feet. And then I can pull out my handy dandy calculator and to the nearest tenth, I guess I'd come up with about 791 and 7 tenths square feet. Well, anyone can work a problem forward. Let's take this one backwards. Surface area, and we're given a surface area for this entire cylinder. I've got two things to do straight away. One is to factor out the 2 pi from both those terms, and the other is to substitute this value, this given value. Now, I, I did these two first because now I can divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi. So let's get that done. And I'm going to take, whoa, move this out of the way. I've got, let me see, my memory is clear. 1, 0, 9, 7. That's divided by 2, divided by pi. That's divided by 2 pi right there. Now I'm going to jot down those first five digits, but the first thing I, I'm going to do, I'm going to put this into the memory of my calculator so I can come back to it. All right, that's good. So now let me jot this down over here. I'm going to show my division. And then I say, all right, well, I guess I'm going to have to square. And I've also done this substitution for the radius. I'm going to have to square this 8.2 over here. So let me pull, go back to my calculator. And that's in memory, so I'm going to clear this right here. And I'm going to take my 8 and 2 tenths. I'm going to square it. Well, um, that's 67 and 2400 square meters, which I can now subtract from both sides of the equation. So, m minus. And in the memory will be this expression. So, let's catch up. I'm looking for that 107. Let's catch up to that. All right, that's the squaring, and that's the subtracting. So I've got 107 and 3,500 square meters, and I have to divide that by 8.2 meters. You notice we've carried units here. I've subtracted square meters from square meters. Now I'm going to divide square meters by meters, which, of course, will give me meters. Whew, exciting. 
So I'll take this and I will divide by 8.2. And now I'm done. Let's see what I wanted. Two decimal places, so we wanted to round to the nearest hundredths, 13 and 9 hundredths. Let's see what we got there. And there you go. 13 and 9 hundredths, finished. Well, here's an interesting hypothetical question. Um, I'm going to take this red cylinder and I'm going to divide, let me see, both the height and its radius by radical 5. I get the blue cylinder. I made them to scale for you. But let's do the math and see how much smaller is the blue one than the red. Let's give it a shot here. We we'll start with this formula that we know, surface area. And I am going to just do a substitution. I'm going to replace, in each case, the radius with the radius divided by radical 5 and the height with height divided by radical 5. Now, I know we normally rationalize the denominator, but we're not going to have to. We're just going to square these. Look at this. We've got a, a square term here, and we've got radical 5 times radical 5 in the denominator there. So when I simplify this, I've got my new expression with my 5s in the denominator. And pretty straightforward here. Let's just factor out the 5s from the denominator, or another way of saying it, factor out the 1 fifth, and you're there. And you can see clearly this blue, that means that this blue figure has a surface area one-fifth of the red one. Or uh, we could say that the red has surface area five times greater than the blue. Well, here's an algebra exercise where we have a given surface area for the cylinder. And we're given a relationship between the height and the radius. The radius is twice the height. So it's a pretty squat cylinder that we're looking at here, pictured down in the lower right. So I'm going to take our formula for surface area, and let's do the substitution. Uh, very conveniently, this um, 108 pi square meters well, contains a factor of pi. So um, I'm also going to factor out the 2 pi from the expression on the right. And I can divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi. Pretty straightforward. Now we're going to have to figure something out here. Let's replace radius with 2h, since, um, well, since that's the ratio. And now we can work it out like this. We can, we can substitute in here for the radius. And notice when we square that, be careful when you're squaring. That's going to be 4h squared. And of course, I've got 2h times h, which is 2h squared. Moving on from here, I can combine these two terms, 6h squared. And over here, I've just taken symmetric property and just reversed it. I like my variable on the left. And now, let me see, divide both sides of the equation by 6. And then I guess we'll take the principal or positive root and the height would then be 3 meters. Notice I throw the units in here. We've been keeping track of it. We know what's the difference between square and linear measurements, and height is certainly a linear measurement. And that would mean that the radius would be double that, or 6. So we weren't asked that, but there it is. So you've got a radius of 6 meters, a height of 3 meters, and judging by the person inside, that looks about right.